I know we all agree that in order to lose weight, we must be in a calorie deficit. But can we also agree that counting calories is not for everyone? I mean, who genuinely enjoys spending all their time tracking their macros, reading nutrition labels, weighing their food? Seriously? Tell me, I'll wait. <sighs> What's up guys, my name is Tumi and I'm all about helping women become fit, strong and healthy. Now, if that's something you're interested in, why not click that subscribe button, join the family and let's do this together. It can be so discouraging when you want to start out a weight loss journey, but you have no clue where to begin with this whole calorie deficit thing. But have no fear guys, because I'm going to share with you six simple strategies to help you lose that weight without counting a single calorie. Now, I can guarantee you that if you apply these steps consistently, you will see results. Number one, use a portion control plate. Just like this one I have right here. Not only does it give you a visual representation of what you're eating, but it also drastically cuts down how much you're eating. The reason I really like this plate is because it forces you to eat a more balanced meal. So you can have your starchy carbs like rice on one side, your vegetables on preferred Preferably the larger section and then your protein on the other. This is my go-to place whenever I'm trying to get leaner. I got this one off Amazon. It was on the pricier side, but that's because it's ceramic. There are other options, but I wasn't a fan because most of the ones I found were either plastic or they were too small, more like children's plates. And I like to see my food on something pretty, so I was willing to splurge. I'll leave the link to the exact same one I got in the description box, but feel free to look around. I'm pretty sure you can find cheaper alternatives. Number two, stop drinking your calories, sodas, juice, your favorite Starbucks Frappuccino. Guys, you will be amazed how many calories you automatically eliminate from your diet by just cutting out those sugary drinks. In some cases, doing this alone is enough to get you the results you want, depending on how much weight you're trying to lose. Instead, please stick to drinking water. You see this bottle right here? I take it everywhere. A lot of times, we tend to mistake thirst and dehydration for being hungry. And this is scientifically proven. So the next time you're hungry, or the next time you think you're hungry, I challenge you to drink two glasses of water, wait 20 minutes, and then tell me if you're still hungry. You might be surprised to see how not hungry you actually are. Also, drinking water helps to keep your skin hydrated and it gives you that glow. So what's there to lose? Number three, add more proteins and vegetables to your diet. You see, in the fitness industry, a lot of us are quick to tell you, don't eat this, don't eat that. I mean, I just told you guys to stop drinking your calories. You see, the problem with this is that the moment you take something away from somebody, that is all they begin to think about. Oh, there's a reason. So instead of always trying to cut out this and cut out that from your diet, my recommendation is to include more vegetables and proteins. This will change your attitude towards the way you eat. It will also have you eating less processed foods because of how satiating these meals are, meaning that they help you feel fuller faster. You see, vegetables and proteins are one of the two most underconsumed foods. So trust me when I say that adding them into your diet won't hurt. Number four, eat till you're 70 or 80% full. This means you stop eating as soon as you're just satisfied. Not still hungry, not stuffed, nor completely full. It's about feeling content with a little room left over. The reason I love this tip so much is because you get to still feel satisfied while you're eating. And if you do this long enough, eventually you will be in a calorie deficit. And I know what you guys are thinking, how on earth? Am I going to know if I'm 80% full? It's not like I have a stomach gauge. But here is the key takeaway, guys. The exact number doesn't matter so much. It can be 70%, 75, it's 5%. It doesn't really matter. What is important here is the act of slowing down when you eat, being more mindful, paying attention to your hunger cues, and just eating a little less than you're already used to. It definitely does take some practice, but over time, you'll get better at it. Number five, change how you eat. Let me be honest with you guys. I turn into a complete zombie when I eat in front of my computer or on my phone and I'm randomly scrolling through Instagram, TikTok. I just eat without even realize how much I'm consuming. And this happens even when I'm eating like something seemingly healthy. If it's now a bag of popcorn,
I will clear the whole bag without even blinking. So you see, how we eat can become so mindless. So I need us to spend more time paying attention to our satiety signals and how our body is responding. Don't worry about measuring or weighing your food, just be present. Being more aware will definitely take you farther along your journey in terms of knowing what to eat, when to eat, and how much to eat in the long term. And my last tip for you, improve the quality of your sleep. A lot of us take this one for granted. Research shows that not getting enough sleep can cause you to eat Eat an extra 300 calories a day. Think about that. You could be on point with your nutrition and your workouts, but simply not getting enough sleep causes your cortisol to increase. It causes your hunger hormones such as ghrelin to become out of whack, which in turn causes you to start having all these cravings. So getting enough high quality sleep, emphasis on high quality, will help you regulate your appetite, hunger, and fullness cues. It will also help you feel calmer and more balanced which in turn will cause you to make wiser decisions when it comes to what you put into your mouth. So guys, this is all I have for you today. I hope it's been helpful. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's anything bad with counting calories. However, if you're just not a fan, then these are tips you have to pay serious attention to in order to reach your goals. Please don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up so more people like you who don't like counting calories can see this video too and get the results they're working so hard for. Remember, I believe in you, you are stronger than you think, and I'll see you in the next one.